So why do narcissists ghost you? And if you're new here, I have narcissistic personality disorder. So there could be a few different reasons why a narcissist will ghost you. Reason number one being it is a final discard. They're done with you and they do, they just done. But the other reason is that by ghosting you, it provides you no closure and it leaves the door open for a possible return later on. And if somebody ghosts you, narcissist or not, and you continue, continuously allow them back into your life, you are saying that you are okay with that behavior. And the way that they get back into your life after the ghosting is something like, hey, sorry, I've been very, very busy. How you doing? Or they'll accidentally send you a text message. Or they'll just be brave as hell and just send you a message asking them to hang out like nothing happened. Either way, if they ghost you, they don't respect you. And if they don't respect you, there's no future there. So if you don't want to have a future with somebody, continuously let, let them ghost you and let them back into your life. I hope this helps. Let Casper be Casper. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I am self-aware diagnosed narcissist Lee Hammock, and I use my platform to raise awareness for narcissistic personality disorder, get more people into therapy, and validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. This series is where I take my TikToks and my YouTube shorts and just make them longer. They are 60 seconds or less. It's going to be longer, of course. So the one you just watched was about uh, how a narcissist will ghost you, like disappear casper on you immediately because narcissist like ghosting is a sometimes if you are so if you are a victim of narcissistic abuse sometimes the safest way for you to leave a narcissist is to ghost them is to just disappear on them yeah like disappear on them no contact no anything because it's sometimes some people are dangerous y'all some people if you tell them that you're going to leave them they will hold you hostage they will call they will fake fake they will un, fake unalive themselves they would do a lot of different things to themselves uh, or to you to keep you from leaving. People, you never know how people are going to react. So sometimes ghosting them to leave them is the best way to do it because you, again, you never know how people are going to react. But I say on the flip side, what this video is more going to be about is about how narcissists like will ghost you. And not, like I said, everybody that ghosts you is not a narcissist. But I'm talking about a narcissist ghosting you and the reason behind it. Because ghosting you provides you with absolutely no closure. You, like I said, there's no, there's, the relationship is pretty, pretty much still open. Open-ended. It hasn't closed up. There's still, like, you might even feel yourself that there's a possibility of them reaching out to you again. No closure. Because when I'm talking to people over Zoom, doing my one-on-ones, that's one of the main things that I hear, though. That's literally one of the main things that I could hear consistently is that people are waiting around um, trying to get that closure from the narcissistic person in their life. They're literally trying to get closure. They're like, hey, look, I'm, I'm here. Like, you know, they, like, not even after ghosting, just closure is one of the most important things because it keeps on people's mind. They want to know why they weren't good enough. What could they have changed? Could they have done something differently to change the, the course of the relationship to make you not ghost them or make you not leave them point blank period or for the relationship not to end? So closure is, a, uh, closure is one of those, it's a tool. It's a tool of, of, of toxic people to keep you, you know, on the hook. Because if I ghost you, and you, like I said, in the video, if somebody ghosts you, a narcissist or not, and you consistently take them back after they reach out three, four, five months down the road, a year later, you will be, they bump into you somewhere after ghosting you, and you take them back into your life and let them clap their cheeks or let them put the cheeks on you, you are literally just saying that you're okay with their behavior you're tolerating it okay, i understand just casual like some casual stuff like some casual casual cheek clapping cool but not anything like if you're trying to look for a serious relationship with somebody that disappeared on you with no word no nothing no response blocked you on everything and vanished that right there is class a ghosting that right there is terrible and people do it all the time i'm telling you people do it all the time and if you continuously allow them to do it they will just take advantage of it I've talked to people that have been ghosted four times by the same person. Like, why do you keep letting this person back into your life? I, I, just, I don't know. I, just, I get lonely sometimes. And they just, it just so happens that they reach out to me in moments of vulnerability. Like, like they know my relationship is over, but they block me on everything. All right, they know your relationship is over because they're probably watching you, on, uh, watching you on social media somehow, some way, shape, or form. That's how they know your relationship has ended. People are watching you. Like, there's no way they can just guess. Like, the fact they narc people think narcissists have, like, you know, a sixth sense where they can just guess when you're when you're uh, uh when you're emotionally unavailable, emotionally vulnerable. Uh, 
Yeah, that girl I ghosted six months ago, she's single again. I can see it. It's in the air. No, it doesn't work that way. They're probably watching you. You post it online how sad you are. You post your you post your current emotional state or you post some sad ass memes online. They see it and they reach out to you. Hey big head. Hey, sorry, um, sorry, sorry I've been MIA, been super busy with work and stuff like that. You know how it goes. No, you don't know how it goes. Nobody's nobody's super nobody that work for six months is too busy to text you. Unless they like on a secret mission. Or like in some kind of military you know, extraction or something like that. They have a POW or something like that. People, six months, y'all. Somebody ghost you for six months, they were intentionally ghosting you. They didn't want to talk to you anymore. And that's literally how it goes right there. That's it right there. That is it. That is it. That's how they say it right there. That is it. But you have to, like I said, you have to be able to take your power back and stop letting people ghost you. If they ghost you, let them remain. Let Casper be Casper. If they ghost you, don't let them haunt you. If they ghost you, just realize that they're not a good person. It, it, like Some people, they ghost are decent people because they're ghosting to protect themselves. But some people that ghost you, just be, just without just saying goodbye or anything like that, just to be ghosting you, just to hit the cheek, just to hit it and quit it, hit it and run, or get it hit and ran. That's how it go right there. Don't let people ghost you. Now, people will continuously ghost you. People will continually dip out on you if you allow them to. What you, I, this is one of my, this is one of the things I say all the time. What you allow is what will continue. Point blank. Period. In the store. What you allow is what will continue. That's how it goes right there. So get your let's say let's say if people are ghosting you, let them remain ghosts. Don't try to reach out to them. Don't hunt them down, because sometimes you will find stuff out that you don't want to find out. Some of these people might be married and just in town for a night or in town for like uh, two couple of weeks on business, and they love bomb you and love bomb the cheeks for three weeks, and then they disappear and go back home to their family. That happens, folks. Start vetting people. Look people up. Google people's names. Do a background check. Like y'all just like just be letting people come in your life willy nilly, and yeah, you know, just dip out. No ghosting. Like if you get ghosted, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it hurts. But that's your closure right there. Let the ghosting be your closure. This person is not, you know, emotionally available enough to just say, uh, "Hey, it was nice hanging out with you, but I'm not feeling this anymore. Goodbye." Not even that right there. They don't do that. They just block you disappear on you it's just like they're running a marathon away from you and stuff like that have i ever ghosted people before i haven't have i i don't know about that i've ghosted probably one person i probably ghosted one person but it was like before ghosting was a thing this is like before ghosting had a name this is just like you know what i mean dipping out on <clears throat> this is back in like early the early 2000s hey i'm old y'all older i'm 36 hey I graduated from high school in 2003, so this was like 2008, nine. Yeah, wow, Ooh, yikes. Yeah, but like I said, if they ghost you, don't let them haunt you. That's just it, point blank period right there, end of story. Take your power back, take back your strength, and just remain, and just let the, let the ghosting be the closure that you need, because narcissists will use it as a tool to keep you on the hook, allow, not, allow, not allow you to move on, and they, and they will reach out to you later on sometimes, just to come in there, Come, come through like a wrecking ball, wreck the cheeks, and disappear. But you, you know, stay strong, stand in your truth, and be careful. Let them, don't let them haunt you. Anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Mental illness is out. Peace.